Hey, what's up guys? Archie here and today we are with Taylor McKenzie at his family home and we've actually been filming something for Taylor's channel around the Ruot track bike as you can see in front of us. Um, we'll drop a link in the description so you can go and check that out. As we're here, we wanted to give you a bit of a deeper dive into Taylor, his history, um, his relationship with us and why we're working with him and just for you guys to get to know Taylor a little bit. So we're here, we're gonna have a fun day, do some fun stuff and uh, hopefully you're gonna enjoy this video. So let's go. <laughs> Exactly, what is life without motorbikes? There's a Steve McQueen quote there somewhere, I think. Yeah, something Every, like that. Something, life is racing, everything else is just waiting. I've probably yeah. butchered that, but something along the lines of that. Probably a lot cooler when Steve McQueen said it. Why are you sat in the back, Archie? <laughs> um, like a being chauffeured. <laughs> I like it. Suspension okay. is perfect for uh, the back as well. Mm. You can feel every single stone you drive over. <laughs> so, Taylor, we'll just get straight into it about learning a little bit more about you and your history and racing and you're obviously coming from a racing family. What can you tell us or give us a little bit of a right from the beginning about where you came from? Obviously your dad is a very well known motorcycle racer, your brother, yourself. Obviously all of you guys are big into the racing. How did it start and give us a little bit of insight into your dad, his career and then how that brought you and your brother into racing. So my dad is Neil McKenzie. He is a three times British Superbike champion and also raced in what is now MotoGP, the 500cc World Championship. He, I think he had seven podiums in that class. So when I was three months old, I started traveling around the world with him. I grew up in a motorhome basically, traveling all around Europe and sort of, yeah, racing's been my, my life since I grew up. In 2007, I started racing and then because my brother was my little brother, he just wanted to do whatever I did, so he started racing too. And then we've both gone on to become professional motorbike racers. I won the 2016 National Superstock Championship, which if you've watched any of my videos, I'll let you know. <laughs> and my brother also won the British Supersport Championship that year. Fast forward to 2021, he won the British Superbike Championship and then I retired at the end of that year. So now I manage a team in the Moto3 World Championship and my brother still races, he races in the World Supersport Championship. So it's basically a long way of saying motorbikes is our entire life. We wake up and we live, eat, sleep, breathe motorbikes basically. So you've known really nothing else in your life apart from the motorbikes, the racing, even now post retiring from actually racing your a motorcycle team manager in Moto3 on the GP circuit. So coming into Rurock, obviously we've been in the, the road side of things with our Atlas 4 and Atlas range and obviously now going into the track side of things. It's great to work with you and get your insight and someone who's like lived and breathed racing. It's a whole world, isn't it, of just all consuming racing. It's like you find that the more I'm getting into it, it's like you find like people are just like, it's like insane how just racing is like everything to people and it's like so sick for you and your brother and your old man who've all done it and stuff like that and I think we're going to go into um, the garage where we've got one or two trophies to have a look at, a few leathers hanging up on the wall, a couple of helmets and stuff that would be really cool to talk about as well. When I started with Roo Rock, I when I raced I had no idea what it would lead me on to doing afterwards but when we first started talking I sort of started asking myself the question, do I know much about motorbike helmets? And I realized since three months old, I've had motorbike helmets on my head. I've raced for all sorts of different manufacturers and weirdly without knowing, I was building up all this experience. So it's been really cool actually working with a manufacturer where I can have input and, and guide people and, and use my experience with it to just make something cool. And, and what we're doing is really exciting. So it's, uh, yeah, we'll go in there now. I'll talk you through some of my old helmets and a few of the stories that are behind them as well. A couple of the trophies? There are a couple of trophies. I think most of mine have been put away now into storage because my brother just tends to uh, <laughs> take the forefront. I'm just the brother of and son of. <laughs> right, sick. Awesome segue, let's go check out the garage. So obviously a lot of memorabilia on the walls, helmets and stuff like that, pictures of successful races, stuff like that. But there's a lot of Taran on these walls and struggling to find sort of 
you know, pictures of you, sorry to say, but do you, do you ever have like a brotherly competition with him about who was most successful? Uh, well, unfortunately for me, there is not a lot of competition. He wins that one hands down. But I did have, it was a 50-50 split in the pictures that were in here because we used to train in here all the time. We had some very good training partners helping each other. And then I stopped racing and within about two weeks, he took every picture of me down and just made it a Tara McKenzie shrine. And now I'm left with my, what was my racing career, scattered about in dusty little piles. <laughs> I think we need to change that picture on the wall, mate. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> so obviously as Taylor being a Rorock sponsored rider, we have a custom Atlas 4.0 that we had done with Image Design Customs, all the colorways. Give us a little bit of uh, insight into, because you designed this with Danielli, our designer, right? In fact, Image Design actually painted quite a few of my race helmets back in the day. So it was cool working with Danielli. Image Design do a great job of paint jobs. And it was fun for me because in my racing career, I always had to have sponsors plastered everywhere. And this is the first helmet I could do just with Brew Up branding. And yeah, it was fun. Danielli also helped me with my new logo. And it's just fun working with creative people because I'm quite creative myself and everything else that I do. So it was a fun project to do this and hopefully we'll do a few more. Yeah, definitely. When that one came into the office, we all pulled it out and we were like, yeah. Sick. Sick, unreal. So yeah, and then this is the same color as the decals on the track bike. Yeah. Same color, so that's why we took this color as well to work with the track bike, even though it's not the track helmet. But you know, we try, we try. But yeah, we've also got custom lid for Rock and Taylor, lovely. The audacity, right? I've just thought, oh, I'll just show Archie my last ever helmet. My brother has stolen the lining <laughs> out of it. And I've left this with the flies on. So it was as I finished my last ever race. <laughs> she stripped it. And it just ruined, I don't even know what to say. It's actually quite upset me. I had all my, so like here, I once rode a bike that was on fire. It was, I don't know if anyone ever saw the WD-40 yes. bike that was on fire. Yeah. That was me. So that was there. It was all sort of ghosted in, different wins that I had during the year. This was all cash because I got bet a thousand pound. I started a race last and my team manager at the time, Michael Rotter, bet me a thousand pound that I wouldn't finish on the podium and I won. So that was all the cash. And then they presented this to me with all the cash inside. That's me. What does it say on the back? It's actually the lyrics of a Jerry Cinnamon song. It was quite emotional. It's probably going to tear up reading it. Do you really want me to read it? You don't have to, you don't want it. I can read it. This is the beginning of the rest of your life. You better start moving like you've run out of time. The realization coming over your mind that it should be a canter if you could just find the answer. You know it could be a canter. The next line of that song is actually if you were just a wee bit less of a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> More than half of the time. But we left that bit off. Yeah, PC. And then that thistle is the Scottish national flower that's on all my dad's helmets when he used to race. And then me and Taz had that too. Sick. It's got no lining, so. Fuming. Yeah. But context behind this one, you said that. Yeah, so this one, my dad actually was, led most of the British Grand Prix. I wasn't there, but apparently led most of it. And didn't end up winning it, didn't end up on the podium, but they let him up on the podium anyway, I think, because he felt sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've never seen that happen since, but it was such a big thing at the time that they let him up. Four blokes on the podium. Just four blokes, yeah. That's class. We're going to have a look in the loft. Taylor's like, do you want to go up into the loft? But you just don't ask questions, you just say yes. So, scared of the dark. So, in and amongst all of the usual things you'd find in a family's attic of Christmas trees, printers, microwaves, you've also got 10 sets of leathers and well, the probably problem more. Is we've got all of my racing leathers, so I, every year I would have had three sets. All my brothers, there's another three sets, and then all of my dad's from when he was racing too. So it kind of accumulated quite fast. So we'd started just keeping one from every year. So I've got one from every year. My brother's got, he's actually a bit of a hoarder. He's got more than me. And then my dad's got all his suits in here too. So it's a bit of a shame really that they're just up the loft, but. Do you, really do you have a there. plan to like one day? One day, I think we possibly, if anyone's out there and they want to start a showroom of our stuff, then they're more than welcome to, because it's just sort of, up our Puppy loft. Yeah. <laughs> When I just absolutely totaled the bike in 2016, you can't really see, but it's bent, so they gave me it's a pen holder. They sort of did it quite angrily when they gave it me. It wasn't like a nice present. It's just like here. Oh, I'll show you this. So they like there's all my race licenses from all the years, all the British Superbike passes I've had, all the MotoGP passes. It's there from like I don't know years ago, and then 
World Championship, Isle of Man TT. So we've spoken about a little bit about you and your family, what you've done. We've seen some helmets, spoken a lot about racing and riding bikes, and you've just suggested that we actually get some out and have a little mess around on some. So that's a good segue, I'd say, into getting on some bikes and having a little bit of fun. Let's go. So that was basically a day with the McKenzie. We've got Neil still going on around the bike. <laughs> Full of beans still, as you can see. I uh, hope that's given you guys a bit more of an insight into Taylor, um, <laughs> our relationship with him, why it's so awesome that we're working with him and he's working with us. And uh, yeah, it was a fun day. Uh, plenty more stuff to come. Hopefully more bike builds, more track riding with the uh, Rock track bike and just sick stuff coming up. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.